Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Hudson Common Council for Monday, July 1st, 2013. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Birchill. Here. District 1 Morset. Here. District 2 Yaku. Here. District 3 Bernard. Here. District 4 Winkle. Here. District 5 Haggett. Here. District 6 Fansler. Here. At this point, any, any citizens in the audience that would like to address the council on any item that's not on the agenda, come, please come forward. If you could state your name and address, please. Uh, my name is George Lang. I own a property. Um, uh, at 522 2nd Street in Hudson, right on Main Street here, the alley um, right off the back here uh, is the issue. I'm wondering if the city would consider taking a look at the storm sewer system that is presently installed. Um, I've owned the property seven years. Every year I have at least $1,000 of expense because my building acts as the curb and then sends it to the two storm sewers. The, storm, the property to the east has a nice storm sewer right there, no flooding. I'm going to hopefully resolve the problem for my building by requesting to pave the, uh, my parking lot. However, when I do that, the water will run off and the properties, all uh, Carboni's old building, all the long locust, will they'll get flooded. There's, and so my point is possibly you could look at a storm sewer rather than coming in later and digging up the new asphalt. Um, but it's just a problem. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to sell the building and I have to tell the potential new buyer that, yeah, this is sandbagging is just the way we do it in Hudson. And it's just ridiculous that uh, for seven years I've had to deal with this. Taxes increase every year, doubled since I've owned it, and yet I've never had any resolution to this problem. I've talked with the city people, and obviously they said you've got to come and do this, so <clears throat> it's my fault for not doing this sooner. But it needs a storm sewer, and, and Carboni's dumps at least 500-gallon drum would fill it in about... Uh, 10 minutes, I would guess, when in a good storm. And yet 10 feet away, it could be routed into the storm sewer that is already there. And I mean, it's just, all I'm asking is, please, I don't know the process, but put it on the agenda or something to have the, the public works take a look at uh, this. All the water from Locust comes right down the alley. I mean, it's, this is a problem in this area right here. This. Uh, um, so I think it should be addressed, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Okay. Madam Clerk, the consent agenda items. To approve the regular meeting minutes of June 17, 2013, and the special meeting minutes of June 24, 2013. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $460,190.45. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of 34 regular operator's licenses for the period July 2nd, 2013 to June 30th, 2015, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. Additional information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the request to barricade Walnut Street between 1st and 2nd Street on Saturday, August 10th, 2013 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the Vintage British Car Show Brit Fest 2013. To approve the request to close 2nd Street between Myrtle Street and Cooley Road on Wednesday, September 25th, 2013 at 4 p.m. for the Hudson High School Homecoming Parade. To approve using a pilot program with the Passport Parking LLC for parking meter software to be tested in the FIPS parking lot until October 1st, 2013. To approve the extension of the billing agreement with EMS Medical Billing Associates LLC as indicated on Addendum A on file in the clerk's office. 
through March 31st, 2014, to approve the issuance of an amusement device owner's license to Andrew Joseph Smith doing business as Superior Vending LLC and permits for 12 amusement devices located at Ellie's on Main and Hudson. To authorize Stephen Tornio to erect a fence at 74 Spring Hill Bay within a utility easement area contingent on execution and recording of an easement agreement. To accept the petition for direct annexation from Allen Griesbach, 483 Stage Line Road, regarding 3.88 acres located in the town of Hudson for future consideration and referral to the Plan Commission, City Attorney, and City Staff for review. To schedule a public hearing for 6.55 p.m. on Monday, July 17, 2013, regarding the application of Magna SMV Transport and Taxi Services, LLC, for a taxi service license. To authorize A1 Archery to discharge bows at its property at 1810 Webster Street on Wednesday, July 10th, 2013 from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. for the Brotherhood Bus Tour 2013 event. To place on file the semi-annual report of the compliance officer and the June 26, 2013 minutes of the St. Croix EMS Commission and the June 25, 2013 minutes of the Hudson, North Hudson Community Access Board. That is all. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Yaku? Yes. Banslow? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morissette? Yes. I don't think uh, Karen's here tonight. Tom, did you have, uh, you want to update us on the engineering products, projects for July? So some of the public projects include the Lake Malu stormwater outfall ongoing, uh, and then uh, includes some riprap fencing and landscaping driveway restoration. Uh, 2012 street improvement project, uh, they went through and they did a punch list and uh, they're going to give that to the contractor to do some of the last minute uh, uh, issues that need to be resolved. Uh, stormwater outfall inspections uh, from the last storm. Uh, we've gone around with the engineering staff and just visited some of our stormwater retention ponds and outfalls and things like that to assess some of the damage caused by the storm. Uh, we did a little bit last Friday and we're going to go back out tomorrow again and look at some of the storm ponds. Private development, the Hudson Center, curb and gutter has been installed, sanitary sewers has been tested um, but needs to be televised. All utilities have been installed. Red Cedar Canyon, uh, they're working on the sanitary and Lock Lockwood Court. Just a little update on the storm progress, the cleanup. Uh, we have crews out doing um, some of the, the limbs that have been hanging with our bucket truck. Um, we have uh, peop crews picking up piles of brush from City Boulevard trees, and we have another crew out with the chipper. So we've, we're trying to do it different steps, but our first and foremost uh, issues would be safety-related things, which be, would be some of the limbs that are still dangling. Uh, some of the stumps that are left over, uh, we've contacted XL Energy. Some of them are uh, located very close <coughs> to gas mains. And uh, we decided that, uh, and they agreed to, that they're going to um, take, take the stumps out themselves. And they'd have a crew on hand if something mm -hmm. would happen. So uh, the dumping area has been going very well. It's still a little soft down in that low part. We closed it for a little while uh, over the weekend to we, so we could get some different barricades and things and route the people in different directions, but it um, seems like that's going pretty well. How long is that going to be open, Tom? 14th. We set a date uh, July 14th, 14th. At, yep. at this time, so certainly can assess it after another week or so. Okay. I know it's not on, yeah, I know it's not on the agenda, but is the boosters putting the carnival on the park? Has that decision been made? We met with uh, some of the boosters and the carnival, people that have the carnival, and it was decided that uh, it would probably be best that they stay off the grass. We've had like six, seven inches of rain last week, so um, they're going to actually move the carnival to the bathhouse parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we've um, set aside some additional handicap parking on First Street by the FIP Center. Um, I think it goes south of south of um, Vine Street, like three or four spots, four, 
I think there was, were two in the bathhouse parking lot? Two or four? Correct. And so we're going to put four on, Vines, or on First Street to cover that. Thanks. Can I ask a question? Sure. The cleanup, how long, I mean, you, you guys are assessing if branches are bullo from boulevard trees or not, or are you just picking them up if they're along the street? Because I'm we, assuming we're, that people are just putting branches along the street. We can tell. I mean, to a point that there's some gray areas that, uh, you know, if, if you look up in the tree and you see a broken right. uh, branch or something like that, um, there are people that have, you know, that have brought, um, you know, branches out to the street, but if they don't match the, whatever trees in the boulevard, it's kind of a little bit easier. So you're not picking them up then if they don't match? Okay. We, we are not. So how long do you think it'll take to get everything cleaned up? Like, when are, how long are we going to look? At? My point is that they're going to just leave their branches out there assuming that they're going to get picked up. And you know what I'm saying? Um, some of the people that are picking branches up have flyers, and if there's been a pile there for a while and doesn't look like they're doing a lot, they, I, I've, I've put some on doors and things okay. and I've talked to some residents. I know uh, the compliance officer, I talked with him in a couple areas that actually are some safety issues where the pile is so large that it covers up the street and some of the pedestrians are uh, have to go around them out right. in the street on 2nd Street. So I know Mr. Krupage has, uh, was going to uh, talk with a couple residents on that. Okay, that's just what I was wondering, how we are monitoring that. Cause At what point do you just pick them up? That's my point. I would say gonna, I would say once you want some point we'll you have, have to, to go through the process otherwise if you know if you're going to build them, we're gonna have to charge them just like we're mowing someone's grass or whatever so that may be eventually what we'll have to do but and I don't know I mean once they're they've been issued a, a warning is it especially like on couple areas on second street is it a two days or five days or he should say in his warning and then if it's not done I have some concerns on that one on second and you know second. I would assume mm -hmm. you would follow a similar pattern like you would with whatever the grass, long grass is, whatever time period we give. You know, I this is a safety issue, though. I mean, mm -hmm. when we met, we left it up to him as common sense, which to me would be safety to pick it up. I mean, if it walks like a duck, it is. The one duck. on Second Street is very. No. I that's what I was asking the question for. We'll see what maybe what they say. I'll talk to Dave in the morning. See if you got any hours then. Yeah. But I would agree, though, to do it through the process, just like mowing. If it's there too long, but it's got to get picked up. You ain't just leaving it there. Yep. And then build Let's it. Let's say if he, it, I'll ask him if he put a time frame on it. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Uh, next item is a proclamation from uh, communications and recommendations from the mayor. Uh, it's called St. Croix River Awareness uh, Cleanup Week, whereas the St. Croix River watershed encompasses 7,760 square miles, over two dozen major watersheds, and hundreds of smaller direct tributaries straddling the Minnesota-Wisconsin border, and whereas millions of tourists visit annually supporting a thriving tourist industry, hundreds of thousands of boaters, Anglers and quiet sports enthusiasts enjoy the water, and whereas three million people thrive in and near the basin and claim that the St. Croix Valley is central to their quality of life, and where the basin is the intersection of three biomes, the northern uh, boreal forest and the prairie and the deciduous forest, it is home to at least 40 species of native mussels and is a major migration coordinator for corridor for hundreds of species of waterfowl and other birds. And whereas the historical border of the Lakota and Ojibwe nations and the location of many historical sites and structures. And whereas the upper St. Croix and Nagakondan Naga Naga River are among the first uh, eight named in the United States wild and scenic river system. And Lake St. Croix was designated as an impaired water for excess phosphorus in 2008. Two major tributaries, the Sunrise and the Willow, were similarly designated. I, therefore, I, Alan Birchall, Mayor of the City of Hudson, do proclaim July 13th through the 21st, 2013, as St. Croix River Awareness and Cleanup Week, and encourage everyone to celebrate, to engage in the voluntary cleanup of the riverbank litter to help protect the beautiful St. Croix Basin. There's a whole list of things, and on the 17th, I don't know how many of people received the flyer uh, for a night on the river with... Uh, I believe it's the uh, 
DNR and the uh, uh, Natural Scenic or Scenic Riverway folks. Um, it's the 17th. I think we uh, leave the dock down here at seven o'clock. So if anybody's interested in attending, um, again this week we have our Fourth of July celebration within the city and get out and enjoy it. Uh, looks like we're going to have our park clear. The rides will be over on the uh, on the concrete, so we won't have a lot of mud over there. So. Come and enjoy the uh, Hudson Booster Days. And fireworks are at dusk on Saturday from the Dyke Road. Okay, anything else? Devin? Nope. Any council person? City attorney? Nope. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.